Hey Scorpio, it's Marley from The Energy Boutique, bringing you your energy forecast for December of 2022. So of course, we came out of November, we closed off Scorpio season, we closed the door on eclipse season, which definitely had a huge impact on my Scorpio friends. And we kind of needed to dive into that Sagittarius energy, even the new moon in Sagittarius before most Scorpios started feeling their solar return energy. Of course, we wait for our birthday to get downloaded with that solar return energy that's going to last us for our new natal year. However, with the eclipse energy, it definitely put a little bit of a damper on receiving those particular light codes and it took well into Sag energy for many of us Scorpios to actually feel rebirthed rejuvenated, revitalized. Now that we are in Sag energy, of course, everything is moving very quickly. Everything is very chaotic. We're in a very short period of time where Time is speeding up where we are in an accelerated manifestation state. We are seeing rapid changes in our lives right now, especially affecting our physical circumstances where our homes, our family dynamics, our relationships, our money matters, our jobs are concerned. There are a lot of moving parts, a lot of moving details. And coming into December, we are going to start to take all of those big ideas, those rapid thoughts, that scatter brain type of energy, and we're going to focus focus it a little bit more on what it is that we actually want to build, what it is we actually want to manifest. So coming into December, December 3rd, we have Neptune going direct at 22 degrees in Pisces energy. Now, Neptune has been set up in your fifth house, your heart chakra for quite some time. Neptune is in its rulership of Pisces energy and as a sister water sign to you, this is definitely exploring the depths of the healing energies needed in order to bring certain wounds to a full completion in order for us to jump into into new karmic chapters. So the last five months of Neptune being retrograde, of course, we were disconnected from our higher selves, disconnected from our intuition, disconnected from our dreams, mostly because we were in the depths of hell, really experiencing a lot of tough love life lessons from the universe. But those spiritual lessons definitely pushed our boundaries, pushed us to a breaking point, but we survived. And because of that, we have a new sense of faith, a new sense of self a new sense of strength that now that Neptune is going direct, we are definitely going to be putting out into the world. Neptune going direct also means that we are leveling up in our spiritual enlightenment, our psychic abilities, if you will. We have healed some serious wounds, especially on this heart space of ours. And because of that, we are unleashing a new level of awareness, of enlightenment, of intuition, of psychic abilities, of spiritual gifts. We are tapping into a new level of creativity. And in this fifth house, this is very healing to our heart space, unleashing a new playful energy, really aligning us with things that make us happy, things that bring us a sense of mission, a sense of purpose, a sense of joy. So on December 6th, we have Mercury, ruler of the mental plane, ruler of information and communication, moving out of this fiery Sag energy that's kind of been a little bit crazy, a little bit scatterbrained, very unfocused. And we're moving into Capricorn energy, the Earth energy, the great manifester of the Zodiac. Now, here's the thing. We have to be very careful with what it is that we focus on. We have to be very careful with what it is that we allow out of our mouths and that we speak. Why? Because we have the power to manifest. We have the power to bring to life anything that our mental plane and our throat chakra actually bring into our reality and into our existence. Now, Mercury moving into Capricorn is like a no bullshit area. We're able to cut the bullshit away. We only want to focus on the things that matter. We only want to speak on things that matter. We are looking to create order in our inner realm of our thoughts, of our emotions, creating order out of chaos. We are looking to focus on long term goals, long term ambitions. But in order to do so, we kind of have to make a to do list on what it is that we have to kind of clean up from the past in order to clean the 
the slate for us to have a perfect advantage on having a brand new foundation to actually build upon. Now, Mercury moving into Capricorn energy is going to be illuminating Scorpio's third house of the mental plane where Mercury naturally rules over. This is definitely going to lighten the vibe, I would say, even though Capricorn energy tends to be a little bit somber, a little bit serious, a little bit too analytical, a little bit too rigid. I think that Scorpios are kind of used to that existential dread used to that very intense way of thinking. And because we are thinking more long term now, and because we have other karmic chapters kind of opening up for us, the I'm going to say outlook for our future endeavors is looking pretty freaking bright. So on the 7th, we have the full moon in Gemini taking place at 16 degrees. And this is going to be illuminating Scorpio's eighth house that Scorpio energy naturally rules over. It's about death. It's about damage. It's about destruction, but only so that we have a clean slate to build upon where we can renew ourselves, reinvent ourselves, bring ourselves back full circle and essentially transform into our higher yourselves. The full moon in Gemini, we have to rewind back to May and June of this year when we had the new moon in Gemini. Gemini, of course, ruling over the mental plane and being represented by the twins. We definitely had a choice point. We had two different choices, two different options, two different paths, two different directions. The information, the data, the details weren't quite clear. We leaned all the way into one path, one choice, one decision. And now we're being asked whether we want to continue with that path or we want to change things up. Of course, Gemini energy being uh, very, very flexible when presented with new data, new information, new statistics that we are able to kind of change course very, very freaking quickly. The key factor in this particular full moon is that Mars, the god of war, our co-ruler, is at 16 degrees as well, retrograde in Gemini energy, really creating a volatile energy for us to stop biting our tongues and actually speak our truth to get out that pent up aggression and frustration and agitation and even resentment. We have biting been biting our tongue for a very long time. We are now in sad season. We have a new truth to speak. We have a new belief system within ourselves, within our our greater grander plan here. And for many of us, because this is in the eighth house, We have a lot to say in order to wrap up old soul contracts, old conversations before we can go ahead and start creating the new. And this is the last full moon of 2022, which means that this is a perfect opportunity to get everything out in the open, everything off of our chest, even if it makes things messy, because we want to enter into 2023 with as light of baggage as possible, the cleanest slate possible. And because this is the eighth house, this is something that is going to help us bring the old to full circle completion so that we can begin again, start fresh and start new. On the ninth, we have Venus, the goddess of love and beauty and worth and pleasure and money moving into Capricorn energy as well, illuminating the third house. The third house is the mental plane. It's new information coming in, shifting the way that we think, shifting our understandings of past events, shifting the way that we think and feel. And then, of course, putting us in a situation to express our thoughts and feelings and open up a dialogue, really communicate with those that need to hear it. Now, Venus, this is a little bit of a flashback to this time last year, Venus was entering into Capricorn, but she was preparing to go retrograde. She actually spent the ending of 2021, the beginning of 2022, in a retrograde sitting with Pluto, Scorpio's ruler, the great transformer himself that helped beat us down, remind us of our pain, our trauma, our suffering, not to paralyze us, not to make us feel less than, but to inspire us, to motivate us, to add fuel to the fire, to push us into our power so that we can boss up, have our empowerment story, take a new role of authority in our lives, and definitely boss up in our self-confidence and our self-esteem. 
So Venus, of course, being in Capricorn energy, she wants to think long term. She definitely does. She wants new goals for herself to reach within her own relationship dynamics with herself, her own worth, her own value. She has money matters on the heart and on the head. And as far as the relationships go, again, Capricorn energy helps us kind of cut through the bullshit with a very sharp knife and see who is coming with us on this new adventure and who it is that we're leaving behind. On the 20th, we have Jupiter, the planet of growth, expansion, beliefs, abundance and blessings moving back into Aries energy. So we have to rewind to May 10th when Jupiter first entered into Aries. Of course, we had been in Pisces energy for such a long time, doing the healing work, doing the dark night of the soul, definitely seeing where endings were taking place. And we were exhausted of all that spiritual work. So when Jupiter jumped into Aries, we kind of cut the cord. We ripped the rearview mirror off of our cars. We didn't want to look back. We were only looking ahead. We had this want, need, and desire to start something new, to bring something new to life, to grow our opportunities, to put ourselves out there. It was a reinvention of self, a rebranding of self, a reemergence of who it is that we desired to be and the kinds of opportunities that we wanted to seize. However, Jupiter didn't stay in Aries energy for very long. He did go retrograde. He had to backtrack through the final, well, through the beginning degrees, I should say, of Aries energy before entering into the final degrees of Pisces energy. Now, Jupiter just went direct in Pisces energy on the same day as the new moon in Sag late November. So, we have this push, we have this urgency to take action to make up for lost time. This fire energy of Aries is just wanting to, you know, make the moves that we haven't been able to make. And for my Scorpio friends, Jupiter moving into Aries is going to illuminate the sixth house. So the sixth house rules over our day to day tasks, our chores, our responsibilities, it is our health and wellness sector, where it is that we're making enough time to balance our mind, our body, our soul. It is illuminating our physical and mental health because, of course, the 12th house that sits across from the 6th house is our spiritual and emotional health. So there may be some changes to your day-to-day -day life. Maybe you're adopting a new routine. Maybe you're implementing a new diet, a new exercise routine. Maybe you are just, you know, growing some old tasks, some old chores and therefore taking on some new ones. But regardless of what it is, this is a brand new clean slate for you to kind of restructure, reorganize, rebuild. And it is going to have a huge impact on initiating and bringing to life a, a new lifestyle, if you will. And this new lifestyle is going to create a lot of beautiful opportunities for growth and for expansion, seeing that Jupiter is here just pushing the boundaries of our comfort zones. So on the 21st, we have the sun entering into Capricorn season, initiating the winter solstice. So the winter solstice is basically the last quarter of the astrological calendar. It will carry us into 2023. And of course, the new astrological calendar will begin with Aries season. But the winter solstice is a time for us to kind of see the tide shift and to see the wheel of fortune kind of move into its last chapter. We become a little bit more introverted. We want to reflect. We want to be nostalgic. We want to cut the good away from the bad. We want to pluck the silver linings out of our not so nice experiences over this past year. And because the Capricorn energy is an earth energy and wants to focus on setting new goals and, and new objectives for us for the long term, a lot of the, I'm going to say, questions that we have about where it is that we should be focusing our time, energy, attention in the new year, a lot of the answers can be found by reflecting back in the past, taking a good look at the, the foundations, the systems, the structures that have been damaged, that have been destroyed, looking at the sense of loss, what has died, what has disintegrated. Those are key indicators on where it is that the universe is providing us a clean slate to build upon and creating and giving birth to new elements that are going to be much stronger and much more aligned with our karmic purpose, with our karmic mission. 
Again, Capricorn energy is karma. It is manifesting energy, but it is us kind of learning the tough love life lessons and maturing to a point where we've learned those lessons so that we can integrate what it is that we've learned in the past in our plans, in our strategy for moving forward into the future. We have on the 23rd, the new moon taking place in Capricorn energy, again, in the third house for my Scorpio friends. If you haven't picked up on this by now, the third house is our mental plane. Our mental narrative is shifting. Our focus is shifting. Our ideas are shifting. Our understanding, our perception of past events is shifting. Our want, need, and desire to be heard is shifting. And with this new moon in Capricorn, it's taking place at one degree. This is the second new moon in a row that has taken place at one degree. The Sagittarius new moon at one degree was kind of opening the door to new karmic contracts that we are establishing that we will be fulfilling over the next two year cycle. Sagittarius energy is karmic. It is the higher truth, the higher perspective, the higher self, the spiritual self, the religious self, the philosophical self. Capricorn energy is karmic in nature more to do with duties, with actions, with roles, with responsibilities, and really kind of learning, like I said, the tough love life lessons in the past, so that we can integrate that, keeping that in our awareness as we go ahead and plan and strategize for the future. So the new moon in Capricorn at one degree, it's taking place on the 23rd, which is smack dab, right when the Christmas chaos is taking place. There's a reason of why these particular events get kind of overshadowed with capitalistic holidays. It's because this is the most powerful energy that we could be tapping into. This is the manifesting energy. This is the karmic energy. This is at a one degree, which is setting the tone for the next two years. And the last thing that the dark force agenda wants is for us to be focused on this new moon in Capricorn and tapping into the power to the energies to the manifesting abilities of this particular moon event. And so most people, because they're consumed with the Christmas chaos, miss the opportunity to really set some solid intentions, some solid goals for themselves under that powerful new moon manifesting energy. Also on the 23rd, we have Chiron, the wounded healer, going direct, of course, in Aries energy. Chiron has been retrograde in Aries energy, kind of pushing us inward to see where it is that we have some wounds that we have to heal. Chiron, yes, illuminates the wounds, but also gives them the wisdom and the knowledge in order to heal them. And in Aries energy, this has been about our ego self. This has been about our pain story, where it is that too many of us have integrated our pain, our trauma, our suffering story into who it is that we are. Many people afraid to heal because they wouldn't know who they are without their pain story. And now that Chiron is going direct, it's almost like we have tapped out our ability to heal the inner wounds that we've been focused on for the past five months. And now we have to get to real life experiences in order to see where the triggers, where the activations are bringing up new topics and themes, new wounds for us to examine. Now, Chiron going direct means that we do have a certain test, if you will, out in the external realm to see how much healing we've actually done. We will get triggered and activated in ways that really set us off we're really quick in the past in order to see how we respond to them in moving forward. Chiron in Aries energy is about our identity, about our ego self could bring up some physical health issues around the head just because Aries energy does rule over the head. There's a lot of tension. There's a lot of fluctuation of energy in the head, mostly because we're in the middle of this great awakening and we're receiving all of these light codes coming in from the cosmos through our crown. So this particular energy is going to be illuminating the sixth house again, day to day life systems, routines, structures that are constantly changing in order to better the workflow, the tasks, the chores, the roles, the responsibilities that now we're moving away from in order to boss up into new ones. This is the health and wellness sector, the mental health sector, where it is that we need to be focused on our physical and mental health here in the physical realm and balance it out with a spiritual and emotional 
practice. Again, 12th house sits across from the sixth house. It is the healing axis. So having the wounded healer, who is a very much a warrior type spirit going direct in this sixth house is definitely going to help Jupiter already in this Aries energy in the sixth house, really push forward, really make up for lost time, really heal some wounds, really just kind of exert ourselves out in the world in a way that maybe our wounds had prevented us from doing in the previous years. The last thing we got going on in the cosmos here in December is on the 29th, we have Mercury going retrograde. That is right. We are going to jump into a brand new year with Mercury being retrograde. I don't take this as a bad thing, though. Here's why. First of all, Mercury going retrograde is the time for us to rest, to relax, to realign with our passions, with our desires, with our path and direction moving forward. It helps us review the past and kind of pluck out the silver linings where we didn't have the time to do so in the, that survival mode. It helps us see things from a different light. It also gives us a different perspective on what it is that we want to do in moving forward. Again, this is like back to the future. You got to look back in order to gain perspective on where it is you, you want to go in the future. So I don't see this being as a bad thing. However, in Capricorn energy, we're super nostalgic. So we're ending, you know, the holiday season, the end of the year on a nostalgic note. It is a little bit serious and somber. Negative Nancy, Debbie Downer definitely comes to life in Capricorn energy. So we have that extra layer kind of on top. We just had the solstice trigger us, pushing us inward. So now we're kind of sitting in a funk, wearing a happy mask to make everybody think that we're merry and cheery and bright. But this has taken place in the third house for Scorpios. And so this is like a reflection on how it is that we got here, our achievements, the things to celebrate, how hard some of the spiritual lessons that we just learned were and where it is that we're now moving into a brand new year, into a brand new space, into a brand new environment where brand new opportunities and rewards and blessings are going to come out of the woodwork to make up for all of the pain and suffering that we've gone through. So even though Mercury, yes, is retrograde, um, we are starting 2023 off in a retrograde. Again, I'm trying to see the positives of it. And not that I want to get too ahead of myself here, but Mercury and Mars, our co-ruler, will be going direct in a, in a very interesting time frame, very close to one another, very early on in January. And what this suggests is that this Mercury retrograde is going to help us get our ducks in a row. We are going to have ideas, plans, strategies, all calculated so that when Mercury goes direct, we're able to move forward. When Mars goes direct, we have that physical energy, that passion, that desire, that aggression to back our ideas, to make things happen, and to bring new things to life. So I see that as being a plus. So some of the messages that I would like to leave you with for this month, the very first thing that they're bringing to my attention is that many Scorpios have a lot to celebrate. Of course, we're entering into a brand new natal year. We're feeling much better. We're seeing the light. We're seeing the possibilities. We're seeing the opportunities. But even more than that, we're seeing a lot of change. We are breaking out of the funk. We are crawling out of the darkness. Many of my Scorpio friends will see positive moves in their homes, in their environments, in their relationships, in their jobs. This is a positive thing. The stagnancy, the deep, dark, weight that we've been experiencing for the past two and a half years is finally breaking free. And that is very much a thing to celebrate. However, it wouldn't be a, a normal Scorpio celebratory time without a little bit of fear, a little bit of anxiety, a little bit of a heartbreak situation. Many things that are ending and things that are not yet beginning are bringing some bittersweet feelings. Our heart and our head aren't really in alignment. Our heart knows that we're making the right move, that we got to boss up, that we're moving forward. Our head knows that it is the right path to take, that it makes a lot of intellectual and spiritual sense. But looking back on how it is that we got here, there's a little bit of a bittersweet attitude to it. It's almost like we're questioning our higher selves. Our ego self knows that we are moving away 
from it, again, leveling up in awareness, leveling up in karma, leveling up in the highest version of ourselves. And therefore, the fears and the doubts, the insecurities and the questioning is all coming to the surface. And this can put a lot of pressure on the head space, a lot of pressure on the heart space, even though we're moving forward, and we have plans, it's like, we're still hella confused. And that is just part of the adjustment period. It's very awkward. It's very disorienting. But what I will say is that Scorpio energy knows how to alchemize the good into the bad, or the bad into good, I should say, uh, but vice versa. Um, and the pain into power, the darkness into light, that's what we do. And we just came out of this eclipse season, which was karmic in nature. So that's why we're moving forward very rapidly at this point to make the changes before, you know, our ego just grips us and pulls us back into a state of fixed energy, stagnant energy, where there's no growth, no evolvement. So even though we are being pushed to make some major changes, there is this sense of sadness, the sense of grief of letting go of a chapter that even though it might not have been super pleasant, there's a lot of silver linings there and has essentially morphed us and molded us into the version that we are right now. And we're about to kind of jump off this kind of cliff and trust that the universe has us and that we're making the right decisions for our soul's mission for our soul's purpose. The last thing that I will bring to your attention is that relationships are rapidly changing. And although it can feel very, very heartbreaking, very sad to have to say goodbye and let go to certain people, places, things, identities, possessions, it is all for the better. We are nurturing ourselves. We are growing ourselves. We are healing ourselves. We are raising our vibration and frequency. And when we see major changes in life, that is a good indication of the amount of inner work, spiritual work that we've been able to actually accomplish. And yes, it is a good thing to be growing outside of your comfort zone, because again, there's no growth in comfort zone. But again, it comes down to the things that we're leaving behind, even though that we've outgrown them, even though that we're grateful for their place, for their role in our lives, it does feel kind of sad. And as excited as we may be to move on, especially, you know, into better situations and in better alignment with the kinds of people that we need to be in alignment with to feel safe and secure and supported and loved and encouraged, it can also be pretty scary. So it's okay if you are going through this adjustment period. It's okay if you are struggling to let the things go that you know you have to let go of. And it's okay to be afraid of being happy and standing in a place of celebratory energies for making it through some of the hardships in your life and actually reaping the wards because of it. It's okay. So my Scorpio friends, I want to thank you so much for your love, for your support. I hope you have a beautiful December. I hope you have a very happy holiday, regardless of how it is that you choose to celebrate. I hope that you're kind to yourself, that you give yourself enough time over the course of this month to cut the cord with anything that needs to stay in this year, to stay in the past, to lighten the load, to lighten your vibe to basically prepare you for a clean slate and a brand new adventure as we move into 2023. I'm sending you nothing but love and we'll talk to you soon.